Imagine crop plants that can resist disease or insects. Food that's higher in nutrition. Plants that can tolerate environmentally sensitive herbicides. Or healthier, more productive farm animals. Imagine these things and you can begin to understand the power of a new science. One that can provide more and better food while it protects the environment. This is the challenge and the opportunity for people who work in a rapidly expanding new field, the field of agricultural biotechnology. My interest in horticulture began when I was in high school. One of my personal goals was to do some type of research in agricultural biotechnology, the greenhouse is the link between the labs and the field. For people who are interested in production agriculture, who don't want to run their own farm, this is a great job. You get to do everything that you do on a traditional farm, but you don't have any of the risk involved. Somebody coming out of high school now might want to consider a career in biotechnology. My job is continually different day to day. There's a wide variety of things that you need to be able to do, and it keeps life interesting in the workplace. The most enjoyable part of being an entomologist here is working with the insects. We even have insects in the laboratory as pets. The Madagascar cockroach is one of them. But my favorite is a tarantula, which I've had now for eight years. I'm from a farming community, so I have a, a genuine interest in anything that will help the lives of farmers. When the opportunity came up to work in this area, it was a way of me saying maybe I can make a contribution and give something back to the community I came from. But how do we give crop plants new traits, like insect resistance in cotton, to help farmers grow crops more efficiently? A key step in the process is tissue culture, a specialty of research technician Danette Ward. If we want to put a new trait into cotton, we would take little seedlings and from those seedlings, we take the stem and cut them into very small pieces. We can then take soil bacterium that contains our gene of interest and inoculate those stem sections. The bacteria will insert those genes into the cut edges of the cotton on stem pieces, and from that, we get a group of cells which we call callus and we cause them to grow into whole plants. Today, technicians like Danette help scientists insert a variety of new traits like resistance to disease or insects, higher protein content or herbicide tolerance into such crops as corn, soybeans, wheat, rice and canola, traits that will help farmers produce more and better food worldwide. Growing newly modified plants into productive adults is the job of people like Betty Hull. She oversees this important next step in corn. The transgenic material that comes to the greenhouse is rather small. We will transplant it. Then we will apply fertilizer. We'll apply water. Space it appropriately so it has enough light to produce the tassel. Once we have uh, viable silks, we will do the pollination. Good. Let's pour the pollen. 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 Pour the pollen
for a dollar. Now let's date it and put a SID sign. The greenhouse allows us to develop viable seeds that can be sent to the field and tested. We're always looking for insects. And insect control is something that we do on a routine basis. Sometimes in the greenhouse, insects are applied to different plant parts to check for the activity or damage that the insect can cause on the different plant parts. Many of the activities in the greenhouse are the same, whether the technicians are working with genetically modified plants or ones that have been traditionally bred. Barry Wiggins is a research associate who oversees the field testing of genetically modified plants. His is the job that links the lab and the greenhouse to the farmer. People like Barry are responsible for preparing the seeds for planting. In the case of corn, he removes the kernels from the cob. He uses a special machine to count the seeds and load them into test packets. which he delivers to other technicians for planting in a small test plot. Okay, We're going to range 37 and 38, okay? So plot one in your hand. We'll plant our transgenic seeds using a modified planter. Each person will take an individual packet of seed and put it into the hopper. Each packet has a different variety of corn in it. We'll want to evaluate the different varieties as they grow throughout the whole year. We scout the fields looking for weeds and insects. During harvest, the research associates will drive a combine similar to a production combine, but they have a lot of computers and data obtaining devices on the inside. People in the labs collect yield, moisture, test weight, and various other traits. The data we get from these is then given to a plant breeder who in turn makes his selections of the best yielding hybrids. About seven generations of intensive testing, selection, and inbreeding are required to produce a parent line of seed that displays the desired characteristics, like improved yield or insect resistance. After they're grown, plants that have been modified to resist insects must be tested. Entomologists like Jay Pershing raise the insects used for this purpose. Rearing the insect in the laboratory does pose quite a bit of problems and challenges. So how are you looking, Mike? Insects are looking really fine today. Okay, great. So uh, Monday's then. Because as the insect grows, it develops through different stages. Okay, Mike, this morning we're going to um, add the zucchini, the bee pollen substitute, and the egg. And each egg. stage has its own requirement. That's its own food requirement, own temperature requirements. And each day, some sort of handling of the insect is required. Now, the goal of the insectary really is to meet any insect need for the research projects. Insects are probably the biggest problem in agriculture. The pest populations are adapting to our present chemical control strategies. We need new strategies, and biotechnology offers that ability. So the Colorado potato beetle is uh, a major pest. We rear that insect here to develop our biotech product, which is completely resistant to the potato beetle, so that now in areas where we couldn't once grow potato, uh, we can now. Tomorrow we'll bring additional plants that protect themselves from a wide variety of harmful insects.
agricultural biotechnology products are produced in an entirely different way. Brent Show works in fermentation, a method of growing bacteria or other cells that have been genetically modified to produce an important protein. One, called BST, or bovine somatotropin, improves the performance of dairy cows. Fermentation is a very complex process because you're dealing with biological organisms and they're very sensitive. We start with a 10 liter fermenter and what you do is try and get these bacteria to grow as best you can at the small scale. Then we'll take them up stepwise to 100 liter and 1,000 liter on up to the possibility of several hundred thousand liters for production scale. Manufacturing BST will help to minimize the number of cows, which means that you need less land for those cows to pasture in. Other products include antibiotics, which help maintain the health of the animals on the farm. The real benefit can be seen in the developing countries that have large populations like Africa. Hunger is always present. I've worked with researchers from around the world to see the joy in their face of what they can take back to their country. It's very exciting. It's very exciting. The field of ag biotechnology is ever-changing. It's a new field that has allowed the researcher to combine different traits, different genes into different plant materials. There aren't any limits as far as what can be accomplished yet. The benefits of biotechnology are um, quite great. Environmentally, it has a great potential for um, reducing the amount of insecticides that are used today. And secondly, I think that as the demand for food increases, the need to get more efficient is really important. In fact, we probably don't realize what the potential will be. This is the infancy of this science. Whether you work in a laboratory, a greenhouse, in manufacturing, or on the farm, Agricultural biotechnology offers you the chance to improve the world we live in, encouraging plants to yield more food, making animals more efficient, using science to protect the environment. These are only a few of the careers in a rapidly expanding new field, the field of agricultural biotechnology, a world of opportunities.